All right, everybody. Well, you saw it in the thumbnail. We're back on the cutlass frame, still in, in two pieces and going to be for a while, I will admit. And let me know in the comments, my plan is I'm going to document every bar I put in this thing. Now, there might be sometimes I don't time lapse as far as like when I do some of the welding. Like, for example, since the last video, I welded a little bit more of the bars back there. You know, I just did that. But I might do that more between. So let me know if you guys are on board for that. Because literally, kind of my thought is, I want to be able to go back and watch this all at some point. So my idea is that you know, when I'm old, show my grandkids or the people in the nursing home what I used to do. And we're going to have it all documented. So if you guys are on board for that, I'm on board for that. And I plan to bring you along for the ride, show you all the different projects and what this kind of thing entails. And yeah, I'm going pretty hardcore on this thing, I will admit. So today we've got some work to do with some more bracing, temporary bracing, so that we can work more on the bars in the middle. So, with that being said, let's get to it. All right, well, now that we got that all taken care of, we are going to Use that piece of old scrappy tube and some tubes over there that I've already kind of cut and measured out to brace the middle. We're going to kind of brace it down in a V because I kind of made a mistake with that square tube there because the idea is that I'm going to make all of the center tubes and then we're going to pop them out. So where the front bar ends up going here you know, it's going to be sunk in just like it is back here. And literally this entire top of the frame is going to get cut off. But that might make it kind of flimsy in the middle. So my idea here is we are going to weld a brace across the control arm mounts, which are going to get cut off eventually. But for now, good brace point. And then we will come down to those bars that are going to make kind of a V here in the middle. And then we're going to come forward off of those bars up to this cross member. So that's my plan to start with. And then we're going to go ham on cutting all this other stuff out. So I think what I'll do is once I get the rear made, I'll cut this one out and probably use it to go from the center up to there. All right. Enough jibber jabbering. Let's get to work.
All right, well, taking a little break from the car for just a second, I wanted to show you guys something that a fan sent me that uh, I think is pretty awesome. And he's working on, I guess, making some more of these, at least I think, based off of what he said in his letter. So, check this out. So, you guys know I weld a ton. And this was made by a guy named Adam from, I believe he's in California. At least he just graduated from the fab school in Rancho Cucamonga, California. I think I said that right, hopefully. But uh, Adam, this thing is awesome. He actually sent this thing to me back in uh, December. And it's so nice, I don't wanna scratch it up. But I did a little bit of bench welding with it and I really like the, uh, the screen that's in it. It's a Viking screen. So if you guys are interested in following Adam, Check him out on Enzo Carbon Creations. He's on Instagram. And uh, he can make you something like this, like he did for me. And it's a really nice helmet. And it's awesome. Like, it's, like I said, it's so awesome, I don't want to scratch it up because welding helmets do get beat up. You know, I've got to do some welding on this thing where I'm going to be laying on the floor, probably resting my head on the floor. And it's going to get scratched, but it's so pretty. But I got to get back to work. Thanks, Adam. This is absolutely awesome. You guys follow him on Instagram. Check him out. Yeah, I got to get back to work. Well, we're back in the shop uh, the next day and a half later. I think that's about right. And you can see I ended up changing my bracket, my support piece back here. Cut that off the top. You know, when you try to rush things, sometimes you don't think everything through. And after we get, after we pop the center section out to weld it all up, the next bar is going to be one that goes from here up to there. Well, my bar that I put across the top of the lower control arm mounts was right in the way. So, five minutes, chop that off. This is some really cheap, thin tubing that I got from a local... Uh, metal supplier just ran down the road. It's actually right here in the industrial park where we're at And I've had it for years And doing stuff, you know kind of similar to this you end up Losing a quarter to a half an inch each time You use it for a different project So it's not super expensive. I forget how much I paid for it but You know, it's not too bad. You can see where it was on another project there some kind of support bracing We've got a couple other different pieces we've used through the years on different cars. So anyways, um, the goal is to try and get that trimmed over there to slide that bar all the way out to the, not to the edge of the, the sideways tubes, but at least out there where it butts up against the factory frame. And then once we put this all back in, I'll actually weld that entire joint to the rocker bar. That's the idea. I think it'll look really nice from underneath the car, give me a good solid spot to jack the car up, mount the floor, all that stuff. So we'll get back to it, see if I can get this thing, at least get that bar and that bar wrapped up. That'll be four bars in this video. Let's see, we did that in video one, number one bar and the two A bars in video two, so then one, two, three, and four. Let's see if we can get this wrapped up and uh, get this thing, get this video wrapped up.
right, well, a lot of grinding, a lot of cutting. But we have four more bars in for this episode. And you can tell that this tube is a different batch than what this tube was. Maybe we got them from a different tubing supplier. I don't know. But we did just get a new batch of tubing in so that I've got more than enough tubing to do the entire cage chassis for the cutlass. And the next bars I think we're going to do is we are going to do some rough measuring on where the mid plate should be because then that will tell us where the transmission mount will be. And we have to do a diagonal bar an inch and five eighths to basically where the transmission cross member is. And then all of the rest of the bars are smaller. So they'll be, I've got to decide if I want to go from this corner up to this corner with a diagonal, or if I want to start at this corner and go to that, which if I've already got one diagonal going there ish, then I might do it this way so that just there's even more intersection points. And then I also have to do something for an under floor, under seat bar. So for that, I'm actually going to get my seats down from the attic and we're gonna mock the seats up in this possibly as early as next video. I think they're pretty awesome. And it's one of the reasons why I sold the old chassis was to fit my new seats. So we'll talk about those in the next Cutlass video, which hopefully, um, next weekend, so this video is supposed to come out on Sunday, so I might be able to get a video done on the car for the middle of the week, middle of the week, or it may be just a Sunday video because I leave Thursday for a special little trip that I'll document for you guys. I'm gonna go hang out with an old friend as well as we have the Ranger race on Saturday. And hopefully I will be able to make it back for the Ranger race, basically all the way across the entire country. So that's that. Appreciate everybody watching and following along. Let me know if you guys want to see literally every bar that I put into this thing, because I kind of want to document it like that. And hopefully you do too. But hope you guys had a great weekend and uh, we'll see you next time.